relationship, that fantasy thing of um, a woman meets man, right? And you know, she's over here on this side of the world, and he's over there, and you know, she's there's just one home. person for them, you know, for each other. They're soulmate type of thing. And the whole movie was about you know these two lives being lonely without this wonderful perfect person in their life and you know all the stuff they were going through and about two minutes of it you know at the very end she meets her prince and they just have to look at each other they don't have to say a word and you assume that they lived happily ever after now was that your perception, or was that just because I'm angry about <laughs> That's an accurate description, but what I saw in it was that life has meaning. It's not just, we're not just bouncing around like we're in a pinball machine, but that people who are supposed to meet meet, and that events are coordinated. There was a lot of people running into each other, you know. There was a lot of synchronicity so and you, coincidence. You saw, like, okay, so you saw, like, every... The people that were supposed to meet, even yeah, it's like there's a plan. Old. I mean, you know, there's like <laughs> there's like people in my life that I'm glad that I know, and uh, they're teaching me. You know, it's no accident that I'm learning about love. But you didn't get the feeling that it discounted those people in between, like this girlfriend that he had, kind of in a temporary you know, mm -hmm. shorter encounter type of thing, and, mm -hmm. and her boyfriend, who had, I mean, I hate to even, he probably, because it's, it's uh, people who haven't seen the movie, but it, it just, to me, it kind of discounted those people mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. It seemed like it. It seemed like it. Yeah. But anyway, plus, they kept making the comment about women over 40, you know, having a chance of meeting a man, being yeah. whatever that clip, you know, that saying is, a chance, you know, very slim chance. So it's like a woman, a woman over 40 has more chance of being attacked by terrorists than getting married. <laughs> <laughs> they, this they is a study. Several times in the movie. <laughs> Some of your self-concept stuff come up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of it, yeah, really. That's the thing to always notice is the reactions, whether you're feeling a little irritated or angry, because, you know, it's that, you know, it is the world's teaching that the, the ego's most boasted weapon is the special love relationship. It's, of all the relationships, it's, it does seem like that's where there's a marriage. It's almost like here's, there's spirit and then there's the illusion. And, and the ego is saying, you know, it's possible to bring the truth into the illusion. It's possible to have a life that's really a life, you know, and everything, and it involves bodies in heavy ways, <laughs> you know. But it's like trying to bring the eternal and the spirit into the, the, the finite. And, and it's such a deceptive, I mean, Jesus says it's, it's the last obstacle you have to overcome before you awaken, you know, that it's the ego's most boasted gift. And he uses the term weapon. I mean, you, the way he describes this special love relationship, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's like, you know, it's the last hurdle, you know, when you're home free when you get past it. And, and to me, it's like all the elements are there because it's, it seems it's such an attractive form of guilt, an attractive form of fear, that it's not seen as an attraction to guilt. So, the attraction to fear. It's in strange. the process of giving it up, wonder what it is that causes some anger. I, th I think we talked about at your house a lot about you know there's still an anger, probably in the sense that that deep down in the mind there's a belief still a belief in sacrifice, and the belief in sacrifice is getting played out in terms of a particular situation, kind of like why can't I have this or why can't I have that or whatever. Being deprived. Being deprived of something, yeah. It's a fear of love again. We're afraid of love. What do I have to give up for love? You know, <coughs> it's scary. Yeah. Total love is total sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you do? Jump into a bad accident? You know, but that's the, the ego's thing. You know. But there's no sacrifice required. There's no sacrifice. 
but it's I think something that we are just placed between us and God. It, it helps me that section back we just popped into a while ago on 32 in the manual where it talks about what is the real meaning of sacrifice. And basically Jesus kind of says, well, in heaven there is sacrifice. There's none. But he even takes the term sacrifice and he says, now I'm going to use your term and I'm going to use it in a worldly way so we can still. And he says, basically he defines sacrifice as the giving up of something that you want. That's how he defines sacrifice. Okay. And then he says, Okay, O oh child of God, what is it that you want? And he takes it in the context. I want misery. <laughs> and he says, here you go. Here's the world, you know, and here's the call with capital C. And you've been called, you know, you've been called to be a teacher of God. Now, here's the world, and here's the call. Now, the sacrifice is the giving up of what you want. What you what, really want. What you really want. Are you going to sacrifice the call with a capital C, or are you going to sacrifice the world, and the pains and pleasures and everything that goes in it? And when you juxtapose it that way, you see, even using this term sacrifice, he's still using it now, he's using it in the in mm -hmm. context of his course. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't really want to sacrifice that call with a capital C, because that's really my happiness. 